Hi everybody, I'm Rook. Welcome back to the table. Here today with a traditional deck profile. I haven't done a deck profile uh, in a hot minute since the Battle City Box came out when we were exploring cards, but I think I, I have some decks that I'm ready to start presenting to you guys. And I want to start with a doozy, one that uh, kind of came out of left field and has been super explosive for me. I feel like people forgot about the god cards. A lot of people are exploring other, other options in this Battle City Box, but sometimes we forget that there were three amazing god cards that came out in this box and i haven't seen too many decks constructed around them yet so i have been able to construct an obelisk the tormentor deck that i believe is pretty consistent against a lot of decks out there and the consistency is certainly around getting obelisk out this is the deck that i believe is going to get a card like a god card like obelisk the tormentor out as frequently as possible you think about all the monarch decks that are out now well obelisk requiring three tributes is kind of the mighty monarch and so you really have to think about ways to to get it out and get three monsters on the field to get that tribute off. So let's go right down the line of this deck. This is a 20 card deck. Everything in this deck is from the Battle City box. So there is no need to get any other card outside of the Battle City box. You can do it with just Battle City box cards. Let's start with the skill. We have to run. It's no monster. It's a god, the Kaiba skill. This is the skill that works in tandem with Obelisk the Tormentor. You can activate it during your main phase, discard any number of cards, minimum one. Then you can add your Obelisk the Tormentor from your deck or graveyard to your hand. It can only be used once per duel. So I do just run the one Obelisk the Tormentor because it's no monster, it's a god, gets this to me pretty consistently, and I like to see that. I'm typically getting it from deck to hand. If I draw Obelisk, that's great. It does have an effect uh, for it's no monster, it's a god, where I can get it from the graveyard. If I'm able to get it out, I can try it again. Um, but Obelisk is my primary win condition, so it's no monster, it's a god is a great skill to benefit that. Additionally, so some people would ask, well, why would you discard more than one card? for the it's no monster it's a god effect wouldn't it be detrimental to have less cards in your hand well some of these cards do have effects that require certain monsters certain cards to be in the graveyard to activate so it's no monster it's a god also gives you a little bit of flexibility playing around with the rest of your deck going into obelisk the tormentor this is the god card my personal favorite the one that i would use the most requires three monsters to tribute four so you need a full field so the point of this deck is how do i get a full field for obelisk the tormentor obelisk is my primary win condition there are a couple smaller win conditions in the deck but obelisk is the big one everything is playing around obelisk so everyone knows similar to the rest of the god cards when obelisk if you're able to tribute summon for it it comes out without a hitch it can't be targeted by card effects by either player and it does have an additional effect where i can tribute two monsters and destroy all monsters your opponent controls. I can't attack when I do that, but I'm not finding that I'm activating that too much. I'm finding that once I get Obelisk out, it's uh, pretty devastating. It's 4,000 attacks, so this is lethal right in itself. That coupled with the fact that it can't be targeted um, by things like Book of Moon or by Shrink or by some of these traps that we're seeing, if there are no monsters on my opponent's side of the field, this is a pretty easy victory. So Obelisk the Tormentor, I'm having a lot of fun with. That's the god card I'm focusing on today. I found that the most consistent support for a card like Obelisk the Tormentor are Magnet Warriors. So I have three Beta, the Magnet Warrior. You will not see Alpha and Gamma in this deck, and you will not see Valkyrian in this deck. I'm so sorry to say, my Magnet Warrior friends. I run three Beta, the Magnet Warrior, because Magnet Warriors are needed to activate some additional effects within this deck, and Beta is the strongest at 1700 attack. So pretty solid card right there. Three Beta, the Magnet Warrior. Also running three Delta, the Magnet Warrior. Delta the Magnet Warrior is a great option because of the effect that it has where when it gets summoned, whether it's normal or special summoned, you can essentially Foolish Burial a Magnet Warrior to the grave. It allows you to take a, a Magnet Warrior from your deck, put it into the graveyard. Additionally, it has another effect that's really great in a traditional Magnet Warrior deck where if it gets destroyed and you have three Magnet Warriors that aren't Delta in the graveyard, you can get rid of those to get Valkyrian out. But like I said, we are not running Valkyrian. So Delta, I'm really just using for additional Magnet Warrior support and for that Foolish Burial to get something like Beta into the graveyard. I'll tell you exactly why I want that effect, because I am running two of the Rock Spirit, which is not necessarily a card that we've seen in the deck yet. The Rock Spirit kind of slid under the radar. It's a four-star monster with 1,700 attack. It can't be normal summoned, so it has to be special summoned by banishing an Earth monster from your graveyard. Earth monster could be Beta or Delta. So Rock Spirit is a special summon in addition to a normal summon that turn. This is what I'm finding could be the third piece in order to tribute for Obelisk on my turn. 
um, it works pretty well. And it's also a pretty solid attack, and additionally it has an effect where during your opponent's battle phase it gains 300 attack. So talk about defense. On your opponent's turn, you're going to have a hard time beating over it with any other 4-star monster because it's going to be at 2,000 attack and it's going to trade very well. So that rounds out the monsters. That's a total of 9 monsters with the Rock Spirit at 2. Going into spells, I have one Foolish Burial, and you can run more. I run the one because I got three Delta. I'm Foolish Burialing enough, um, but I do have an extra Foolish Burial just so I have more opportunities to get monsters that I need into the graveyard to get something like Rock Spirit out. So there's a Foolish Burial. And then, of course, we're seeing the nasty three Book of Moon. Book of Moon solid defense keeps my monsters alive, allows me to get my Obelisk out. So that's target face-up monster on the field. Change the target to face down defense position. More spells to Shrink. We're seeing Shrink. I, this is very similar to a lot of decks we're seeing. I mean, the spells are there. They do not lie. Very consistent across a lot of decks. So to Shrink, which is also target to face up monsters, original attack becomes halved until end of turn. That actually can play very well into another spell card I'm running, which is three Magnetic Field. Magnetic Field is the field spell revolving around the Magnet Warriors. When Magnetic Field comes out, if you control level four lower Earth Rock Monster, which is going to be pretty consistent looking at Rock Spirit, Beta, and Delta on my field, you can target a level four lower Magnet Warrior monster in your graveyard special summon it so that's why i want to foolish burial my betas and my deltas and it's another reason so it works on two different parts you know magnetic field can get it back out and also you can banish it to get something like rock spirit out so there are a lot of opportunities to fill your board very fast in order to get the tribute for obelisk additionally one of the reasons why magnetic field is so great and this can also opt as kind of a secondary win condition once per turn at the end of the damage step when an earth rock monster i control battle an opponent's monster the opponent's monster didn't die I can bounce that monster to the hand. So all of my monsters are earth rock monsters with the exception of obelisk. But if these monsters were to go into battle with my opponent, I can bounce them to the hand, which slows my opponent down significantly and opens the window for me, especially if I have the play for obelisk next turn. They don't have a field. They're left defenseless. It's going to be an easy win. So magnetic field, really great to activate in order to get a magnet warrior back onto the field. And to support magnetic field, two traps in this deck. This is going to round out a 20 card deck. I have two metaverse. Metaverse is you take a field spell from your deck and either activate it or add it to your hand. This card is much better than I originally anticipated as you play with it more. You realize that the language is you can either activate it. So if you have no field spell, but you have a metaverse set, your opponent goes into the battle phase and they try and attack into your magnet warriors, you can metaverse into activating magnetic field, which all of a sudden brings into play the return to hand effect that maybe your opponent wasn't ready for. So metaverse, it's not just an extra way to get magnetic field into your hand. You can certainly activate it as well. If you don't have a field spell, that's going to catch your opponent off guard. And of course, you know, it plays into things like shrink, for example. If you want to go for the bounce to hand, you can shrink yourself. There are a lot of different combinations as it works this way, and we see those combinations in a lot of Magnet Warrior decks that are popping up right now, but Metaverse is a great way to get Magnetic Field on the field and to slow down your opponent. All right, quick and easy. That's the Obelisk the Tormentor deck that I've built so far. Uh, this is at 20 cards, and you could run more cards if you'd like. Uh, additional cards that you could certainly run that would help you get the tribute for Obelisk is it's it's always not a bad idea to throw some Zomas in here because Zomas can be activated and used as a tribute and a Zoma on its own is very good. Additionally, there are other cards similar to Zoma that you could activate as a trap that would serve as a potential monster you could tribute for like Quantum Cat or Spooky Swamp Man. But the common loop that we're seeing in this deck in order to get Obelisk is you have something like Delta out which allows you to fuel your graveyard with cards like Beta. You got Rock Spirit by banishing Earth Rock monsters in the graveyard and then you get magnetic field out which can bring something like beta or delta back to the field it's very very easy to get something like three monsters out is this deck interchangeable with any other god card it's hard to say simply because it's no monster it's a god pretty much guarantees that i get obelisk in my hand and also it allows me to fuel my graveyard with something like a magnet warrior so it's no monster it's a god works very well here and if you think about slifer that skill is fury of thunder is the one that lets you get four cards in your hand when it comes out so it's always at 4,000. Not necessarily going to help you find it. I don't think it's going to play very nice with Ra either as uh, It's No Monsters of God is very consistent on just here's my obelisk. So I always have that wing condition ready and then it's just a matter of how do I get the monsters on the field in order to get it out. Hope you guys enjoyed this deck profile. Like I said I haven't seen too much play with the gods yet and you know they're certainly not broken but you know, we, we do sometimes forget that three Egyptian gods came out in this box, so I love to see decks around those. I know that some other folks are trying to build some good decks around Slifer and Ra. I personally lean towards Obelisk here. There are so many ways 
to mill cards into the graveyard and obviously metaverse getting magnetic field. So you could potentially deck out if the game goes on long enough. So maybe you do want to run maybe 22, 23 cards, throw some Zomas in there. But very interested to know what you guys think. Comment below any cards that you would add to this. Additionally, if you like this video, please feel free to hit the like button and of course subscribe for more as we have plenty more speed duel content coming your way. Thanks guys. I'll catch you later.